when we go on holiday, unless we're going to the middle of nowhere or a private island, um, we're bound to meet people. That they're everywhere. Um, and we've got a choice to make when we meet different people to talk to them or not to talk to them. That's the question. In today's postcards uh, from Paul, uh, in, in th this last postcard from Paul, really, um, we read of Paul's instruction not to just meet people, but um, people who are always going to be around. But when we meet them, to share something of the good news of Jesus with them. A few years ago, um, we were on holiday in Cornwall, and we were walking through uh, Padstow Harbour. I, I wonder if you know um, Padstow well, a beautiful kind of fishing village. And I was focused on two things. Firstly, I, I was on holiday, I was relaxing, I was focusing in on chilling out. And, and secondly, I was focused in on getting the Cornish pasty for our lunch. Uh, we were, were all hungry, and um, yeah, they've got some really nice Cornish pasty shops in Padstow. And we were walking, um, uh, walking through the harbour together, and all of a sudden, Nikki said, I've got to go back. I've got to go and speak to that woman. And I'm thinking, well, what woman? There were loads of people there. It, it was summer holidays, and um, it was quite quite full of people. And Nikki dashed back about uh, about 20 meters and started speaking uh, to, to this lady. And they, as they chatted, um, we waited. And we waited a little puzzled and, and <laughs> obviously wanting our pasty as well. And after a few minutes, Nikki um, came back and she explained that she, as we walked past uh, this lady and she walked past us, uh, she felt that God wanted um, to say something to her and um, wanted Nikki to share a word with that lady. So she did. Nikki was ready to preach, well, not from a pulpit, but to, to share God's message with this woman. She was ready, as this passage in chapter four describes, to share God's message in season and out of season, when we were off duty, as it were. Um, and Paul's message to Timothy in his last part of this letter is like a proclamation sandwich, uh, a sharing sandwich, uh, sharing, share God's, God's message kind of sandwich. Um, slice one, preach the word, and, and slice two, do the work of an evangelist, verse two and verse five. Uh, proclaim um, or share the message of God in all situations, in season or out of season, whether um, we're in season doing normal life and routines, or whether we're taking a break or on holiday, or just going about uh, our chill out time or something. Um, Paul is saying to Timothy, share Jesus, share God's words with people. And um, it's to be part of your normal routine, Timothy, uh, wherever you go, whatever you're doing, it's to be part of your daily living. And it's important to note um, that there are two different slices of bread in this proclamation sandwich, verse 5 and verse 2. Verse 2, preach the word, is talking to those within the church, those who have come to faith or, or, or are of faith. And Paul is instructing Timothy to speak God's word, God's truth, and, and correct them and instruct them in God's word. And verse 5 is to proclaim the message of the gospel to those who are yet to hear the good news of Jesus, those outside of the church. With both of these verses, with preach the word and do the work of an evangelist, with both of them, though, Paul instructs Timothy and therefore also us to proclaim the message of Jesus with patience with great patience, verse 2, and with care, with focus to keep our heads in all situations, verse 5, and with endurance to keep on going. We need to know and recognize that some people aren't going to want to hear about Jesus. Some people aren't going to want to hear what the Bible actually says. They're not going to be well, they're not going to seek to have um, instruction from God's words. Paul uh, describes in two verses um, not just the kind of people that Timothy will meet, but also describes that many people um, inside and outside of the church in the UK today. Verse 3 and verse 4 are the two verses that I'm thinking about. Um, let's read them uh, together. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. I wonder 
as I read those words, whether people that you know, whether they're followers of Jesus or, or whether they're far from Jesus and, and, and they're not followers of Jesus, whether there are examples of people that have come to mind, or whether in the news you have, have heard of denominations or, or churches that are doing just these two verses. God calls us to stick to the truth of his word and to patiently instruct, carefully instruct and correct people towards the truth. And this is not a popular task. As many evangelical church leaders, including myself, are currently discover discovering pretty much every week or fortnight um, that there is something that we, we read of or, or um, a, a conversation that uh, we need to say something to challenge or to carefully and graciously challenge some, some um, liberal thinking or um, watering down of God's words. However, however difficult it is, as I've been reading through 2 Timothy and, and chapter 4, verse 1 reminds me that this task is not optional. To preach the word and to share God's good news, to, to correct and to instruct people within the church, even if they, they don't want to hear it, um, even if they, they are going away from God's word. God has called us to that task. And also he's called us to, to be evangelistic, to do the work of, of, of being a, an evangelist. And it's not an optional thing. And verse 1 reminds us of that. Out of reverence to God, it's a task that we cannot turn down. In verse 1, Paul writes this to Timothy, In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus. These are sobering words. This is, it, it makes the instruction to correct and to share the, the, the word of God, to stick to it and, and to um, share it with others and to, to share it evangelistically as well. It makes it a more serious task and one that we cannot turn down, not just if we're in church leadership, but each and every one of us as we seek to follow Jesus in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus who will judge the living and the dead. Jesus, the King, that will return. Paul gives Timothy this charge. And, and therefore, in, in light of verse 1, once again, as we, read, as we read this, once again, I choose to make myself ready. I choose to be prepared in season and out of season to, to keep myself ready, to keep my head in every situation, to be gracious, to be careful as I instruct or, or share the, the, the good news, to be ready in season and out of season, ready to proclaim the word, to preach the word, verse 2, and to do the work of an evangelist, to share Jesus, verse 5. How can we do this? How can we make ourselves ready? Well, there are many things that may be helpful. Let me just share three things from the previous three weeks, from the postcards in Paul, sorry, postcards from Paul uh, series. Uh, and then you've got opportunity to reflect by yourself or discuss with the people around you. In postcard number one, in chapter one of 2 Timothy, we we're reminded that God has given us his Holy Spirit and that his Spirit will help us and give us boldness, not to be fearful, but to be faithful. And we're to be reliant on the Holy Spirit, reliant on the, on the promptings and nudges um, of, of the Holy Spirit, like, like Nikki had when walking in Padstow for that lady. In week two, in postcard from Paul number two, in chapter two of 2 Timothy, we were instructed to be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ uh, and to allow the grace of Jesus to permeate every part of us. Practically, if we aren't excited about the good news, I don't think we're strong in the grace of Jesus. Let me just explain that. It, the grace of Jesus 
is the best news ever. It, the good news is the best news ever. And if we don't think the good news is the best news ever, if we don't, um, don't, don't think it's just, it's worth sharing, then probably we don't, we haven't fully understood the immensity of God's grace given to us in Jesus. And we need to recognize that and get strong in grace again to go back to the basics of the gospel, the core of the gospel, and, and get that grace filling once again, Holy Spirit filling and reliant on the Holy Spirit, filled with grace and celebrating God's grace so that we're human beings, that, that we, we um, are being strong in the grace of Jesus, and that enables us to do the things God has called us to do. And then... Uh, from, from last week, we're to be people who feast on God's words, uh, to, to allow Scripture breathed by God, um, to allow Scripture to be our food, to fill us and to fuel us. Um, that God, God has given us Scripture for our good and for us to live by, and we're to be saturated by His words, to feed from it each day. So there are three things, three postcards that will help us to preach the word and to do the work of, of an evangelist. Verse two and verse three, uh, verse two and verse five of uh, chapter four, the instruction that Paul gives. And from today, we can read this instruction, this encouragement to preach the word and to, to um, do the work of an evangelist, to... Um, we can be prepared in, the, in doing that. We can do all the training. We can do all, all those things. But we need to actually connect with people. It's people who God wants us to proclaim the word to and to evangelize. It's not the wall or um, just to yourself. We're to meet with people, and we need to be where the people are. If we aren't where the people are, how are they going to hear? How are they going to be instructed? How are they going to be corrected? And maybe in your discussions or your reflection time, it isn't just that you'll reflect on how can you be ready, but who are you connecting with? And how can you connect with them better in order to share God's good news or to instruct and correct in a grace-filled, careful, patient way? Let's pray together before we discuss. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for these postcards from Paul going through to Timothy. Bless our discussions now. Bless our reflections. Help us to be people who stick to your word and instruct and proclaim it to people, to correct people's thinking. Help them to be receptive and to be blown away by the grace that we show as we're sharing it. Help us to be people that have grace and truth in perfect balance like uh, you, Jesus, um, showed us. And we read in, in John chapter 1 that you came full of truth and grace. Help us to be like that. And help us to be people who are connecting with others so that we can do the work of an evangelist, declaring your gospel of grace. Empower us by your Holy Spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.